Um, but even at that, there is still tension between the Hutu and the Tutsis over issues of quota. That oh, we need agree that you guys should have 60%. But it seems to us now that you have 70%. So you have to reduce it. You have to go back to the original um, quota agreed, to the original percentage of uh, positions that you should hold. And the same um, has happened even in cabinet and even in, um, um, in parliament. So largely, um, since 2005, there has been some relative peace in Burundi. And um, they, they, they established what was called peace and reconciliation to try to get people back together. But it's a very, it's a very tenuous situation. Because as I said, there are two major ethnic groups there. And all the fight they have engaged in is one group thinking that um, they are superior to the other. One thinks that they are the elite. The other thinks that um, we are the original owners of the land because we are in the majority. So that tension continues. But as I said, there is some tenuous peace that continues to hold. But of course, as you can imagine, Burundi is extreme, it's one of the poorest countries in the world. It doesn't have as much um, mineral resources like Democratic Republic of Congo or other African countries. And so majority of the population, I don't have the statistics with me, but I can imagine that um, slightly over 85% of the population lives under a dollar a day. And um, education is extremely um, um, inaccessible to a majority of the people. In the case, let me talk briefly about Rwanda. As I said, the history of Rwanda and Burundi are almost similar. You have the same dynamics occurring in Rwanda. Now, the Rwanda genocide was as a result of one particular incident that triggered this huge massacre of people. Whereas in Burundi, the genocide occurred in 1972. Um, in Rwanda, it occurred um, almost a little, almost 20 years, slightly over 20 years after the Burundi massacre. And so um, in the case of uh, Rwanda, the Belgians again privileged the Tutsis over the Hutus, gave them access to education, trained them in the army, made them to be the elite, made them to think that they were far more superior than the, the, the Hutus, made them to think that they have been destined to rule. And so um, by 1960, that dynamics changed also. The Hutus shot their way to power, gained education, not, as, not in large measure like the, the Tutsis. But in any case, they finally gained control of access to um, political power. Um, Habere Mana became um, the, Hutu pre the Hutu president in Rwanda by, 19, by the late 80s. And so he said, Rwanda and Burundi are one country. He said, well, we are divided by the colonialists. And so he, as president of Rwanda, and being a, Tutu, uh, being a Hutu, decided to go to Burundi to say, look, if you guys don't have peace, there is no way Rwanda will have peace. So let's start by agreeing to you know, various peace accords. And so he struck an accord with um, Ndai, who was Tutsi and president of um, Burundi. On his way back to Rwanda after this peace accord, his plane was shot down. 
But even before his plane was shut down, the Hutus in Rwanda were gearing up for war. They believed that the Tutsis never wanted them, the Hutus, to rule. And so they knew something was amiss. And so they were gearing up to take up arms to fight should anything happen to their president. And indeed, something happened to the president. So no sooner the president of Rwanda, who was Hutu, was, um, the president's plane was shot down, than Hutus in Rwanda got up, used machetes to carry out the worst humanitarian massacre the world has ever experienced. The difference is, in Burundi, the Hutus were killing Tutsis. In Rwanda, the Hutus were killing Tutsis and Hutus they suspected of collaborating with the Tutsis. And so the massacre was such that um, Tutsis bear the brunt of, bore the brunt of it. But equally so, Hutus who were seen as trying to protect Tutsis were also killed in the genocide. Um, until the current president, and I will, I will show you slides, of Rwanda, um, um, Paul Kagame, who was a rebel leader of um, the Rwanda Patriotic Front, I was also camping in somewhere in Uganda, and partly in the Democratic Republic of Congo, came in to stop the massacre with his own forces. Because the international community, as you may have heard, abandoned Rwanda. Um, everybody pulled out. There are numerous tons of books that have been written about the Rwanda genocide. The French were blamed to have supported both sides. Uh, the Catholic Church was blamed to have provided refuge for some of the, the killers. Um, South Africans were blamed for having, you know, played a double.